everything that helps us to carry on. Now this special guest is someone, um, I suppose you could say really, um, she had a very dark beginning in her life, but when she came to Ireland, she had hope, she had love and a new beginning with her Irish family. She's been seriously damaged by Chernobyl. She's had a very tough life so far. And I'm often conscious that when I speak in public, I would say that Chernobyl is forever. And that maybe sounds a bit abstract, but actually for the likes of this young speaker, it is each and every day, and it will shatter her for the rest of her entire life. Our guest speaker spent the first 10 years of her little life in trauma, and often in great fright, with only very rare glimpses of hope and of love. But to tell us her story of triumph over all of that, may I ask you to give a beautiful, warm welcome to Raisa Maknevich Carolyn. I'm before you here today to share my story as a child of Chernobyl. My name is Raisa Carolyn, and I was born in Belarus in 1993 seven years after the Chernobyl disaster. As a result of Chernobyl and its aftermath, I was born with various medical conditions such as a cleft palate, genetic disorders, and various issues with my legs. I was abandoned as a baby and grew up in an orphanage until the age of 10. Unfortunately, having been abandoned from birth, neglected and abused in the orphanage, my life was looking very bleak to say the least. This all changed when I met AD and the Chernobyl Children International Volunteers. Ever since, my life has been transformed and for the better. Unfortunately, the pain, memories, trauma experienced during my time in Belarus is something that will always remain with me. The memories of not being taught to eat or walk properly until the age of six when I arrived in Ireland. The pain I felt when I was beaten with nettles and belt buckles and the sadness I felt when I could not experience the fun and joy of playing with toys. As I grew older, I was placed into a mental asylum because I had disabilities. I spent months sitting in corridors, watching patients rocking back and forth and hitting themselves among other things. By the time AD and my late mother Anne had rescued me, I had taken up some of the ha those habits and it has taken years of therapy to overcome. The only thing that would help me keep calm were scented candles and listening to Westlife on my tape recorder. <laughs> Looking at me today, you would think I was like any other young woman, living her best life as the teenagers say these days. Although this is reasonably true, the effects of Chernobyl will always remain with me for the rest of my life. Although it's been 17 years since my adoption, the effects will always remain. The challenges I face include over 30 operations and counting. The biggest challenge I now face is living with a prosthetic limb due to having an amputation at the age of 12. This has given me a better quality of life, but living with a prosthetic limb is never quite as straightforward. Despite my eight-year-old nephew often asking if I am a transformer, <laughs> as he does not understand in spite of me trying to explain to him numerous times. I know that if I ever want to have my own children one day, there is a 50-50 chance that they will be born with the same genetic issues as I was. This means I have to think long and hard about having a biological family of my own, because Chernobyl is crossing generations. Although much has been worked on, and I am now a social butterfly, there is also a fear of abandonment, being alone as a result of the orphanage, mental institution, and being abandoned at birth. This obviously worsened when I lost my adopted mother Anne when I was 16 years old. She is my rock, and she often looked, told people that I was her ray of sunshine. But now the tables have turned, and she is now my ray of sunshine, looking and shining down on me every day. The experience of my life in Belarus have taken a toll on me mentally and emotionally, with me having to live by bearing negative experiences from my life in Belarus so that they do not interfere with my life today. It has taken years of counselling and therapy to overcome those experiences. Sometimes, often, something so small could trigger a memory. I cannot stress enough to you today that children in Belarus and around the Chernobyl region are feeling the effects of the tragic 1986 disaster. A lot of what is visible are birth defects and illnesses, many fatal. It is also important to say that while a lot can be done medically to help a child's quality of life, 
the effects are felt socially, emotionally, and mentally. This goes for me, and I am in Ireland almost 17 years. This is why it is hugely important for me to see the success of the Homes of Hope, some of many programs, as it helps to shut down orphanages one by one, allowing children to get the care, affection, and love they need to do with the effects of Chernobyl. This enables children to have a childhood, something which I did not have. I can only ever recall one happy memory during my time in Belarus. And this was one time when we got let out to play on the swings and slides in the orphanage grounds. This is probably why I still love to play on swings to this day, because it takes me back to the only happy memory of my childhood. Unfortunately, my childhood was shadowed with negative and painful memories. Many I can recall vividly, especially when we got punished for the smallest things. I can recall being locked in a closet with three other children for many days, only knowing if it was night or day by the small light poking through the bottom of the door. Those memories and much more will always remain with me and outweigh the good times. 33 years on, Chernobyl continues to threaten and endanger children and people. Chernobyl and its effects are forced to be reckoned and with, sadly, it continues to pose a threat for generations to come. It breaks my heart to think that children continue to suffer, and I don't want anyone else to experience what I did. But sadly, this is what is happening ever since the tragedy of Chernobyl. With your love, support, and dedication, we can help make lives a little easier, and in fact, add years onto children's lives. If I had stayed in Belarus, I can say for a fact, I would not be alive today. I would not have graduated with an honours Bachelor of Arts degree from NUI Galway, nor would I have graduated with a Master's in Criminology from University College Cork. I would not have been able to represent Ireland as an active sports athlete, and I would not have gotten to experience working alongside the Road Safety Authority and gained valuable experience, which I did in the past nine months as an intern. So thank you to the RSA and Liz for that wonderful experience. As AD often says, step by step, heartbeat by heartbeat. Thank you for allowing me to share with you a small bit of my story and please never forget one thing, there is hope and it is you.